Hello, my name is Beth Dixon, and this is the second video in a series based on Vicki Borlaug's PowerPoint presentation. Whoops, I can't get the screen to fast forward, but a PowerPoint presentation based on z-scores comparing values on different scales. I wish to thank Mrs. Borlaug for allowing me to use her PowerPoint presentation in making this set of videos. We're on to topic two, and I will start this video on the second topic, comparing values on different scales. Instead of explaining exactly what I mean, I will just go straight to the example, and I think the example will do a better job at explaining than any words I could use here. There are two mechanical aptitude tests available. One test is called Engines Anew, and has a mean of 436 and a standard deviation of 14. The other test, called Fix It, has a mean of 62 and a standard deviation of 4. Tom takes Engine a New Test and makes a 411. Sarah takes the Fix It test and gets a 57. Who has the higher relative score? Justify. So this is a typical problem that our faculty ask on our test. Asking students to compare two values in this case, two aptitude test scores that use different scales. Just because the engines a new test has the score of 411 and Sarah's fix it test gets a 57, doesn't mean that the engine's a new test, or Tom, has the better score. We need to standardize the scores in order to compare the two scores. Another way to say this is we need to figure out how many standard deviations each score is above or below each mean. In other words, we need to find each z-score. As we do the problem, we want to look at each test separately, organizing our data so our numbers do not get confused. First, engines a new test. Look for the mean, which is 436. Look for the standard deviation, which is 14. Look for Tom's score on this test, or look for who takes this test. In this case, it's Tom, and Tom gets a 411. And we've organized that information all together. And we have for the engines anew, a mean of 436, a standard deviation of 14, and that Tom gets a 411. Next, let's organize our information for the fix it test. It has a mean of 62, a standard deviation of 4, and Sarah took this test and got a 57. Notice the organization again. You do want to be able to keep up with your information. You cannot compare the test scores because they are on different scales. We can, however, compare the Z values because the Z values are the number of standard deviations above and below the mean. Let me say that again. Why can we compare the z-scores? Because the z-scores measure the same thing, the number of standard deviations above or below the mean. So let's go back and look at Tom's engines a new test. So let's find the number of standard deviations from the mean that Tom's score is. Find the number of standard deviations from the mean by using the formula z equals 
x minus the mean divided by the standard deviation, x minus mu over sigma. x is 411 minus 436, which is the mean, divided by 14, which is the standard deviation. 411 minus 436 gives me, I think, let me reach for my calculator here because I did not do that part by itself, 411 minus 436 gives me negative 25, divided by 14, rounded to two decimal places, again, z-score should always be rounded to two decimal places, gives me a negative 1.79. Be sure that you do the top of your uh, formula, then divide by the bottom, or put the, place the top of your calculation in parentheses divided by the bottom, otherwise you will not get the correct answer. So Tom's score is a negative 1.79. So because it is negative, remember that means he scored to the left of the mean. He scored below the mean. Okay, let's look at Sarah's test. She got a 57, so we want to find the number of standard deviations from the mean, again using the formula, 57 for her score minus the mean of 62 divided by the number of standard deviations, 57 minus 62 gives me 5, negative 5, and negative 5 divided by 4 gives me negative 1.25. Again, it is below the mean, and so we have their two z-scores. Now that we know how many standard deviations each scored, we can compare make our com comparisons because we can compare the z-scores. Who has the higher relative score? We're looking for who scored relatively higher on their test. Now we need to be careful with our negative numbers and to illustrate this I will sh show you the number line. Here's our z-score number line and let's place both Tom and Sarah on the number line. So the scores to the right are higher. Who has the higher relative score? Sarah has the higher relative score because she, her score is to the right of Tom's. Here is some exercises for you to try. Pause if you wish to do these. Thank you for watching, and as always, please feel free to stop by and see me in MBS 222 here at Walter State. And again, thanks to Mrs. Borlaug for allowing us to use her videos.